Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm going to make another one of the twist ice dyes, and I'm calling this one a forest floor. That name will make more sense in just a little while. So for this design, it is really easy. All I'm going to do is grab one sleeve of the shirt and start to twist it. I'm going to use my other hand to twist the shirt, and I'm going to keep twisting until the shirt twists in on itself. And once it kind of twists itself into like a cinnamon roll type shape, I'm going to put some rubber bands to hold it in place. Out on Dharma Trading Company's website, they have some photos that you can use for color inspiration. They have one called Fall Forest Floor, and that's why I named the shirt that, is I used that color palette for my inspiration. So before I start applying the dye to the shirt, I have taken it outside and put it on a rack just because I'm doing a few gravity dyes and I thought I would do this one outside as well. I've also used some plastic cutting boards that I've cut into strips and attached those together and placed them around the shirt to use as an ice barrier. The fold on this one is a little thicker than my silicone cake molds, so I'm going to use these instead. On the last one of the twist dies that I did, I applied the die in stripes. So this time I thought I would apply the die in pie shapes and see if it made a difference in the design on the shirt. Since I'm using one of Dharma's color palette inspirations, all the colors that I'm going to use on this shirt are Dharma Trading Company colors. I'm using deep yellow, avocado, jungle red, pomegranate, better blue green, and Citrus Got Real. That color is, or was, a special muck color that they sold only in 2022. It's not available anymore. They actually suggested to use Orange Crush, but I didn't have that color, so I substituted the Citrus Got Real. After I've applied all the dye to the shirt, I'm going to add an additional sprinkle of soda ash over the top of the dye. I'm going to force quite a bit of liquid through this shirt because I'm going to add quite a bit of ice. So I want to make sure that I have plenty of soda ash in the shirt to react with the dye and I don't accidentally rinse it all out. Then I'm going to add on a pretty large chunk of ice which I made in a disposable container. The size was actually a little too large because of the ice barrier. So after applying the dye to a few other shirts, I came back and added some of the two inch cubes of ice that I make underneath this large chunk of ice and just allowed them all to melt. I came back and added a few more chunks of ice a little later on because there was quite a bit of dye left sitting on top and I wanted to make sure I got really good color saturation down through the middle of the shirt. Because I had this shirt on a rack, I had the ability to lift it up and look down underneath to make sure the dye had gone through to the backside, which I did. So after that second layer of ice, I took the shirt and put it down inside of a container that has a metal rack down in the bottom. Then I placed the lid on the container and left the shirt and the container outside in the heat. I think all total this shirt processed for probably about 18 hours before I began rinsing it. I normally leave my shirts for 24, but it was really hot that day, probably about 95 degrees. And when I took the lid off of the container, it was all steamy inside. So the container helps to keep the heat inside and it also helps to keep the shirt from drying out. 
The shirt was actually pretty warm when I picked it up out of the container. I did the normal rinse out process and started rinsing the shirt in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Then I untied the shirt and warmed the water up to hot and continued rinsing in hot water to try to rinse out the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. Instead of rinsing for a long time in hot water, I ran some really hot water in a container, added a little bit of Blue Dawn dish detergent to the water, and allowed the shirt to soak. When the water in the container cooled off, I changed it out and continued the soaking process until the water was almost clear. Then I put the shirt along with some Dharma's professional textile detergent into my washing machine and I washed it using a hot water cycle. I've included some photos of the soaking process so that you can see how much dye really comes out when you soak the shirt in hot water. Okay, so the shirt has been washed and dried and I've given it a quick iron and this is what it looks like. Okay, so what do you guys think? I know the color palette said fall forest floor, but I don't know, I get watermelon vibes. I mean, two things can be true, so it could be both fall forest floor and watermelon. I really like it though. I like the colors. I think they go really well together. I've included a couple of close-ups so that you can see the shirt a little bit closer and how the dye moved and the different color splits. I didn't notice a huge difference applying the dye in pie form instead of in stripes either. The shirt kind of ended up with the same pattern as the one that I did last time. I'll leave a link down below in the description for this video to the last video where I did the twist on a shirt. I don't think that the lines on that shirt had quite as much curve to them as the lines on this shirt. They were more diagonal instead of looking almost like it was a fan fold starting at the shoulder without having the definition lines from the perfect folds. That's kind of what this shirt looks like to me is like I tried to fan fold it, but just didn't make really great fan folds. That's one reason why I think this is a great design for beginners. It's not a really hard shirt to fold, and I think it turns out looking really pretty. For this shirt in particular, I really do like the kind of reddish colors mixed with the green and just that little tinge of yellow. I think it really makes it pop. Like I said, I get definite watermelon vibes from this shirt. I think it may be because I put the better blue green right up next to the avocado. So that dark green is right up next to the lighter green and then you've got the other colors. I mean, it does kind of remind me of a forest floor too, but where I live, we have a lot of brown in our leaves that fall. So I think adding a little brown into this would have tipped it a little less toward the watermelon and a little more toward the forest for me. It's spot on though with their photo. I mean, they match the colors perfectly to go along with the photo that they're using for inspiration. Our leaves just normally aren't that pretty where I live. Okay, so I like the shirt, but what do you guys think? Do you think this looks like a forest floor? I mean, you all probably have prettier leaves where you live than I do here, but drop me some comments down below and let me know. And if you like this technique or you've enjoyed watching me continue to experiment with it, I sure would appreciate it if you would like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.